Indonesia itu sebenarnya beruntung karena kita memiliki berbagai macam spesies satwa yang endemik. Dan salah satunya adalah gajah yang berasal dari Sumatera. Akan tetapi dari tahun ke tahun jumlah gajah yang kita miliki semakin ben- berkurang ya. Sekarang saja hanya sekitar 1.200an. Dan itu pun yang berada di alam liar jumlahnya semakin menurun karena... Adanya deforestasi dan penggunaan lahan untuk kepentingan manusia. Nah, pada 10 tahun terakhir saja jumlah gajah yang tewas karena mati diracun dan dibunuh itu lebih dari 100 ekor. Sehingga perlu usaha yang khusus untuk menyelamatkan dan melestarikan gajah-gajah Sumatera. Nah, insight With Desi Anwar kali ini berada di Taro di Bali untuk melihat salah satu upaya untuk menyelamatkan dan juga mengembang biakan gajah Sumatera di Taro Bali bernama Mason Elephant Park. Di sini ada sekitar 31 gajah Sumatera termasuk 4 ekor anaknya yang lahir di taman ini. Mari kita saksikan bagaimana gajah-gajah Sumatera ini hidup dilestarikan dan juga memiliki rumah yang baru. Sebagai negara kepulauan terbesar di dunia yang dilintasi garis katulistiwa, Indonesia dikaruniai kekayaan berlimpah baik flora dan fauna. Salah satu fauna yang berhabitat hanya di Indonesia adalah Elepas Maximus Sumatranus atau Gajah Sumatera. Gajah Sumatera tersebar di beberapa provinsi di Pulau Sumatera, diantaranya Aceh, Sumatera Utara, Jambi, Riau, dan Lampung. Menurut data Forum Konservasi Gajah Indonesia, FKGI, populasi gajah Sumatera tercatat sekitar 4.800 hingga 5.000 ekor di tahun 1980-an. Kemudian populasinya menurun, menjadi sekitar 2.800 ekor di tahun 1990-an. Dan di tahun 2016, gajah Sumatera tersisa sekitar 1.724 ekor. Di Indonesia, gajah Sumatera merupakan satwa dilindungi. Keberadaannya diatur dalam Undang-Undang Nomor 5 Tahun 1990 tentang konservasi sumber daya alam hayati dan ekosistemnya, serta peraturan pemerintah PP7 Tahun 1999 tentang pengawetan jenis tumbuhan dan satwa. Walaupun dipayungi undang-undang, populasi gajah terus menyusut secara signifikan. Lembaga Konservasi Dunia IUCN bahkan menetapkan satwa endemik Indonesia ini berstatus kritis. Laporan dari World Wide Fund WWF, ancaman utama bagi gajah Sumatera adalah hilangnya habitat mereka akibat deforestasi, kebakaran hutan dan perburuan. Satu dekade terakhir ada 129 gajah yang dibunuh di Sumatera. Sebanyak 59 persen kematian diakibatkan diracun dan 5 persen lainnya dibunuh menggunakan senjata api. Berbagai upaya dilakukan pemerintah dan pihak swasta untuk melestarikan keberadaan gajah. Dalam beberapa tahun terakhir, pemerintah melalui Kementerian Lingkungan Hidup dan Kehutanan mendirikan pusat konservasi gajah yang tersebar di Pulau Sumatera. Salah satunya Taman Nasional Waikambas Lampung. Di konservasi inilah, gajah Sumatera diharapkan dapat lebih jinak dan populasinya terus berkembang biak dengan baik. Ya, saya sekarang akan berjumpa dengan Nigel Mason, pendiri dari Mason Elephant Park Lodge ini. Yuk, mari kita ketemu dengan orangnya. sedang memandikan gajah-gajahnya. Hai Nigel. Hai. Hey, how are you? Desi. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? Who are you uh, giving a bath to? Morning, man. This is our first baby that was born here. This is Jigeg. This is Jigeg. Yeah. Hello Jigeg. Apa kabar? I'll hand this over to the guys. There you go. And this oh, is sorry. <laughs> Who do we have here? 
That's Tagore, one of our big male elephants. He's a very beautiful elephant. Big, big, big tusks. Big tusks, yeah. Big tusks. Really yeah. lovely. But he's very gentle, very nice elephant. So how old is he? He's well into his 30s, so uh, he's wow. quite a big boy, and as you can see. who do we have here? Um, Melanie. 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 Yeah, that's Melanie. Melanie is uh, one of the first elephants that came to the park back in 1997. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's uh, one of the originals. She's Thank not you. a big elephant. She's quite a small lady, but very she's nice. A she's very a beautiful nice. elephant. She's beautiful. So very, very fascinating. Melanie. Jagag, baby Jagag, who is and now how old? She's uh, eight nine. years old, eight years almost old. nine. Yes, nine years. Coming up and to. Tagbo. Tagor. Who, oh, Tagor. Tagor, yeah. Who is a big, big fella. He's a big fella. Now, <laughs> Nigel Mason, I mean, he is, dia adalah pendiri atau founder dari Mason Elephant Park Lodge ini. Ini sudah didirikan sejak tahun when was this built of the, the we park? started started in 1997 um, and slowly slowly built the park to what it is today we're still you know doing things and as the as the money comes in we improve mm -hmm. for the elephants for the guests etc so we're now just coming up to 20 years wow 1997 mm. jadi sudah mm. 20 tahun ini pertama kali didirikannya and Nigel you're Australian Australian, yeah. Actually, I'm English born, but lived in Australia for many years. Yeah. Tapi bisa bahasa Indonesia dong. Oh, sedikit, yeah, sedikit. sedikit, sedikit. Saya malas sekali. Malas sekali. <laughs> Dengan gajah bicara bahasa apa? Bahasa, bahasa tubuh. Indonesia. <laughs> shampoo, shampoo juga. Okay, Nigel, in this elephant park, mm. what do we have here? How many elephants and you know, what can we learn about the, the Okay, park? well the elephant park was set up originally just to save some elephants. We started off saving nine elephants and we saved a few more and then we saved the final ten we rescued in uh, nine, uh, 2004, mm -hmm. which where we made the movie Operation Jumbo, which is a yeah. nice movie to watch by the way. Um, it was set up to rescue them, but we soon realised that Keeping elephants was very expensive. It's not a not a, an easy thing to do. They're very destructive. They're very They're large. Very big. They eat a lot of they food. Must eat a lot. <laughs> 250 kilos a day. So we had to turn it into a business that was self-supporting. So mm -hmm. we then developed the Elephant Safari Park, and which now has become the Mason Elephant Park. And uh, and how many do you have now? We now have uh, 31 elephants. 31 27 elephants. rescued and four babies born here, of which uh, Jigeg was the first. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm. jadi 27 mm. ya yang diselamatkan, mm. empat lahir di sini. Yeah. And how big has the park grown? Well, we started off with about two and a half hectares. We now just purchased a little bit more land, and uh, that brings us up to four hectares now. Mm -mm. And how many elephants can this park accommodate? Say, well, yeah. we could probably accommodate another four or five, maybe half a dozen maximum. Then we would have to expand out more, but it's a good amount at the moment. I'm, I'm quite happy with the 31 elephants, pretty good. But of course, we're always trying to uh, breed the babies, uh, breed for more babies. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have some more babies because yeah. they're very cute when they're little. When they're know, this they're, size, they're fantastic. They're, they're <laughs> nice and chubby. But yeah. no, tell me a little bit uh, about the beginnings of it. Now, you said you rescued elephants. I mean, Melanie was one of the original yes. elephants that mm -hmm. uh, you came in. Where did she come from and she, what do you mean when you mm -hmm. rescued her? Well, what was rescue, happening with... Okay, rescuing, when we say rescue, we didn't go to the jungle and take mm -hmm. these elephants. Let's make that clear. They were already displaced from the jungle because in Sumatra there's been a lot of uh, oil plantations, oil palm plantations, acacia tree plantations for paper. Uh, in fact, we have in Sumatra the biggest paper mill in the world, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a very big business up there. So, unfortunately, the elephants slowly are being displaced from the jungle as deforestation takes over. So these animals become a pest, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. because they're trying to get back on their own land, which is no longer there. Yep. And they find oil plantations, they say, this is all right, we'll eat these, no problem. And of course, then they come in conflict with the people. So the government would come in and save the elephants so that they're not killed because mm -hmm. they'll get poisoned or shot or something. So they rescue them, put them into these, uh, they call them training camps, but mm -hmm. they're, they're not exactly training camps. The elephants are chained up literally all day and it's a very bad existence and they didn't live very long there. So to rescue them, what we did is to bring them to Bali for a number of reasons. One, of course, to save them. And the second reason was to try and make more awareness about the Indonesian elephant, which is a very exclusively mm -hmm. different species to any other elephant in the world. 
It's okay. the smallest Asian elephant. It's only found on the island of Sumatra, and it's a very beautiful elephant, very peaceful, mm -hmm. calm elephant, unlike African elephants, which you wouldn't be standing around mm -hmm. them like this. They'd probably smash your head off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, beautiful. So, so tell us about Melanie, because Melanie is one of the first ones that arrived here. So what condition did you find her in? Oh, and if very, you very had left her wherever she, would be dead she now. was? Let's make that clear. All these elephants would now be dead. The, the lifespan in those camps was something between two to seven years. Why? Because not enough money there to support them, uh, no medicine, inadequate food, and often very, very polluted water. So, you know, the combination of all those things made it very difficult to keep these on. Plus, of course, the elephants being chained up all day, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting no exercise, they, you know, their body starts mm. to break down. Of course, they were very, very skinny. I mean, she, when she came, all her ribs here, you can see all her ribs. She was, you know, a very unhealthy elephant. But now, and when they when they rescued, they stand differently. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, this. See how she's standing, quite proud. Mm -hmm. When they rescued, they sort of hang like this all the time. Just that's their oh. position. Very, very different posture very to sad, a healthy elephant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she looks very healthy. Now. Oh, she's very healthy. Twenty she's years beautiful. later, and she's still still going thriving. strong. Yeah. So she's, she's a sweetheart. We brought some mahouts from uh, Sumatra with us. The mahouts are the, the people, the people who, look who look after the elephants, uh, like the guys here. It's one of our, our mahouts. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we then um, had to untrain the mahouts. And Why? Because they had learnt from Thai people how to train elephants, which was using very, very brutal methods. So we said, that's not going to happen here. Well, what we, sort of method when we talk well, about What was the rescue process like? Did you have to ask for government permission? Oh, I yes. mean, it, it couldn't have been easy bringing no. an elephant all the way from Sumatra to and it Bali. Got, and it got harder. You know, to mm. start off with, it was relatively easy because they were at Waikambas, which is mm -hmm. at the bottom end of Sumatra, which was fairly easy. Still, it was a long trip, four to mm -hmm. five days on the road, non-stop in trucks crossing three islands, not easy. We, they can't come off the truck, they have to stay on the truck but for did, that time. But did you have to buy her or did you have to, yes, how did we you had to, We her? had to negotiate with the forestry department and that has to be then cleared by the minister mm -hmm. uh, who signs off mm -hmm. and uh, we then take over. The elephant will always be owned by Indonesia because it's, yeah. a, it's a protected species. So we are the custodians of them, if you like to say. But why did yeah. they give it? I mean, why presumably don't they just give in it to 90, us? No, I mean, why, why did they <laughs> hand it over? Because presumably in 97, did you, you didn't have the park yet? No. Or you were, no. I mean, did, did they was, ask you what you're going to do with it? Well, or? they asked us, of course, and we said we were going to bring them to Bali and we were going to create a, a, a sanctuary here for them in Bali. Um, at that stage, nobody really cared because really? they were really a nuisance and they were costing money to keep. And, and also 97, if you remember, 97 98, was, yeah. very, different, very different then. Yeah. So nobody really cared. As time has gone on, of course, the government has become more involved and more caring. The last 10 elephants we bought was much more difficult than the first 10 elephants, not just because of bureaucracy and that, but also because uh, we had to go further to get them. Now the problem was no longer in Waikambas, the problem was in Riau province, yes. which is much further into Sumatra. Mm -hmm. So the last 10 were quite difficult to organise and quite difficult to bring down because mm -hmm. of the longer distance. and. Uh, you know, Rio is a bit of a wild province compared to Waikambas. <laughs> we had a few problems. Yeah, the, or Lampung is it's, it's easier to cross. Yes. It. So you brought the first time you brought all nine at the same time, yes, or all, one at a time? All, the time? all nine. Convoy of trucks. One truck going by ahead land. by land on the ferry. Ferries, yeah. How long we had did to, it take you? Oh, it took uh, four days. Was it hard? I mean, how how did they? Were they you know hungry, mm, stressed out? Well, or? they were very sick elephants. So obviously we were very worried bringing them down. We had to choose elephants that would be able to make the trip, of course. Mm -hmm. We had to make sure that they were going to be able to stand up for four days, not fall over in the truck, otherwise they would die. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had one truck that went ahead, which would find food and water, uh, radio controlled, and then we would follow them, mm -hmm. stop for water, stop for food, no. load in and, and keep and going. Did you already have the land then in, in Bali to bring yeah, them yes. in? Yes, yes. So you actually already specifically 
yeah, bought the, the land. Yeah, with, yeah. With, uh, you, you're married with a, an Indonesian. My right? wife Yanni, yes, yeah, so who is somewhere around. We'll yes. see her later, maybe. Oh, <laughs> no, but, yes. but tell me, because you know, you're probably like the Steve Owen of the elephants. <laughs> but tell me, do you, what's your background with elephants? I mean, no, what's your I had story none. and your passion? I mean, um, how do you end up? How do I end up with elephants? Rescuing elephants. It's, look, I would, I'd lived in Indonesia for quite some years before this. Uh, we had the company Bali Adventure Tours, mm -hmm. which is now Mason Adventures. And so I'd been involved in rafting, started mm -hmm. the first company here in Bali, mm -hmm. and a number of other things like but that. But no elephants. So, but no elephants. This was really something that happened out of the blue. It wasn't planned. I didn't sort of say, oh, I'm going to go down to mm. elephants and make an elephant business. It just sort of happened. And but what triggered it? What was the tipping what point? What triggered because it was this when is a I huge saw... huge responsibility, a huge one thing. The, the, what triggered it was when I saw the elephants and how bad their condition was and, and what was the future of them, where there seemed to be no future. Uh, my, you know, sort of broke my heart. I've always been an animal lover and, mm. and I've always had all sorts of animals in my life, everything you can think of. But... Uh, you know, these really, it really broke my heart to see mm. the conditions they're in. It was quite obvious they weren't going to live for very long. So this seemed to be like a good idea to bring them to Bali. To be honest, when I came to Indonesia, I didn't even know Indonesia had an elephant. It was news to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I was discovering elephants and they discovered me. So we sort of both discovered each other together, you know, at the same well, time. We, we do, we, we have and often we forget that we yes. have elephants because yes. it's, you know, there's always uh, all these horror stories of, like you said, mm -hmm. conflicts between mm -hmm. people and elephants, and yeah. the elephants always yeah. getting the the raw end of the deal. They, they get poisoned, they get, you know, they're poached, they're, they're trapped. tusked, and yes. they're trapped, yes. and, you and know, it's, it's still it's, going on. Yes, yeah. it, it's it's something that, you know, me also as an animal lover, it, well, you know, it, it's nice to see, you know, healthy elephants, happy elephants. But mm -hmm. so when you, Melanie and her friends came over here, so what was the next stage? How well, do you next, rehabilitate them the and make next, sure that you The next give stage them was, uh, it was quite complicated. We did, we brought some mahouts from uh, Sumatra with us. The mahouts are the, the people who The people who look, who look after, after the elephants, yeah. uh, like the guys here. It's one mm -hmm. of our, our mahouts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we then um, had to untrain the mahouts and Why? Because they had learnt from Thai people how to train elephants, which was using very, very brutal methods. So we said, that's not going to happen here. Well, what we, sort of method when we talk well, about Well, hitting method. them, smashing them. Many of our uh, elephants will sh have scars. This, she doesn't have so much, but some of the male elephants have scars on their heads. Some of them have scars around their legs from being tied mm. permanently up. Uh, so we had to undo that damage. And the first thing to do was to train the hoods to a new system of training. And that was quite hard, because some of them just didn't how, want how to. How do you do that? I mean, because you yourself... You, yes, I was involved, and I, I had a, um, a guy down from Sumatra who was quite, uh, quite easy to get on with. I managed to convince him that we were going to do it a different way. Uh, we were not going to use beating and bashing and, and scaring the elephants to train them. We'd use, you know, the system that we would train a dog with, like, you know, repetition and reward and this sort of thing. Of course, originally they were not convinced that would work. They were quite convinced it wouldn't work, but it did. But it took longer, mm -hmm. and uh, slowly, slowly we uh, we undid the damage that had been done to them in the captivity that they'd been uh, living in for that time. Mm -hmm. Most of them were very scared, very freaked out, um, extremely skinny and unhealthy. So. It took quite some time to get how them long, up to How health. long did it take them to? A year to a year and a half to get them up to what we felt was that. And the training took more than a year too. Depended on the elephants. Mm -hmm. Some elephants took more to it than others. Uh, some were easier to... Uh, they mm. did, because we didn't know what background they came from. They see, we didn't know what had happened to them before. Mm. So some were more freaked out than others. Now, <laughs> Nigel, obviously it takes special skill, expertise mm. to look after you know, animals like this. Do you have like an... As the number of elephants grew, do you have sort of like an army of, of staff that really, yes, I mean, how, absolutely. What, what are the main sort of uh, things that you have to basically Well, of course, uh, you know, the, when you have elephants, you, they, they are very destructive. Mm -hmm. So you have to design the place so that they can't destroy everything. Because these gardens would last, you know, maybe two or three nights. They would destroy everything. They would just yeah. uproot them. They would uproot and smash everything. <laughs> so we, we had to put in fences and, and barriers and things mm -hmm. to keep the people uh, safe from the elephants, while, especially in the early days when they were still being trained. 
and uh, we had to develop uh, different systems of how to keep the place clean, how to, uh, how, how to um, uh, make sure that the place didn't smell because most people think of animals that's going to stink, you know. So that was, uh, that was very important. And of course train a whole village mm -hmm. on how to be involved with the park. I mean Tarot Village was quite a poor village um, and what we did is we created a system where we worked together with the village. For instance, all the food that this comes in every day mm -hmm. is like a cooperative we develop with the village. So what do they eat exactly and where does the food come from? It comes from all over Bali, um, but it's collected by the village who then on sell it to us. Uh, this you're seeing on here is chopped up uh, coconut leaf. Oh, but they okay. eat also, it's a bit is of that, Is that their favourite food? Or? That's their favourite. That's so probably about 40% of their diet. But they also eat a lot of other things, vegetables, fruits, uh, elephant grass, um, rice, bananas, mm -hmm. banana trees, you know, you name it, they eat it. Anything's green, they eat it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep them, you know, eating all the time, otherwise yeah. they'll be uprooting the trees. Well, they never stop eating. Even when they're full, they'll still keep eating. It's mm -hmm. just, that's what elephants do. <laughs> so how many how many people do you have to help you look after the we have, 30, is it not 31 elephants? You we have, have 31 yet? elephants. We have about 45 mahouts allowing for days off, sick days, mm -hmm. holidays, etc. We also have a very large cleaning staff. Um, then we have a, a, a big staff of gardeners and of course uh, restaurants and cleaners. Mm -hmm. So we've got about 160 to 170 people here at the park. So it's grown, I mean, from oh, yeah. initially, how, oh, yes. many, how many people? Oh, when we first started, about 25 yeah. people. Presumably also have vets on hand. We to have make vets sure on hand, they're... yes, everything, everything mm -hmm. here. We have, uh, and one of our vet is over there now, as a matter of fact. Um, it's, it's, they come up uh, twice a week and are here instantly if they're needed on call. So mm -hmm. if, we, if we've got a problem with an elephant, we can bring them up in one hour. We are checked constantly by the forestry department from Indonesia. And they're they, quite happy with what happening. We have to do reports on every elephant every week. Monthly reports are put in, six monthly, one yearly reports. We keep all that up so that we inform the government all the time. Now, Jageg was born in, in this park eight years yeah. ago. How did it feel when you had your first oh, baby? It was very exciting. Very exciting. What, what, does it, what does it prove? What does it mean? Does it well, mean that it they're means, well settled? It, it happy, means that they're happy they're elephants. Mating. They're breeding naturally. Uh, and these were naturally born. This was an artificial insemination. So it, it shows the elephants are happy and comfortable in their environment. Uh, otherwise, they, they won't breed. Who are her parents? Uh, uh, her parents is Seng Wong, is uh, her, um, her uh, father. Mm -hmm. And her mother is, oh God, who is her mother? Is it the first think. batch or the second oh, batch? Okay. No, she was the first. So uh, Seng Wong is the father of all four babies. Mm -hmm. He's the most dominant uh, elephant here. And we have the Ooh, four different okay. mothers but one father. But not this guy here. No, not no, he hasn't, he hasn't done anything yet, Tagore. Yeah, Maybe he'll like to, sir. I think, I, I think <laughs> he he's ready. going to be here, uh, wow, with all the, the you gotta, You've got to admit, to another elephant, he must look very handsome with yeah. his amazing And, and I can imagine if he's roaming in the wild, the poachers would be... These tusks would be gone. Yeah. Yeah. So they would be gone. Tell me, Nigel, the, you know, the elephant, the camps, and here, what are the big main difference the when big it comes main, to looking after the big the main difference of the is that the elephant camps didn't look like this. They were desolate. They, we have actually photos up in our gallery if you want to have a look. But they were totally desolate. Nothing. No trees, no grass, mm -hmm. just dirt. Plus the forest up there was burning. Hello. So the whole Whoa. area <laughs> <laughs> You're on TV, you better behave. <laughs> the whole area was covered in smoke. So it was down and their, their water supply was like a mud hole very different to this. Here you can see everything's green. We we created this. This was mm -hmm. actually empty rice paddy. So everything you see here we planted over the last 20 years. So it's it's sort of an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. We're always adding trees and, and changing the gardens to make them more shady, cooler, mm -hmm. etc. But I mean we chose Tarot because of that. We're 2,000 mm -hmm. uh, feet above sea level. It's cooler here, about six degrees cooler than the coast. And we yeah, get a lot more rain here, as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> like now. It's, it's so it's perfect raining. for the elephants. So, so this was chosen elephants uh, mm -hmm. with the first preference. Guests, 
had to come up here the hard way. In the old days, the road was very broken and it was very difficult to get people to come up mm -hmm. here. Today, we've become a little bit better known, so yeah, obviously no, we get more well, people. Well, no, especially this area now, Ubud, yes. it's very, very it's crowded. He wants my tourists. shoes. <laughs> but Nigel, in the beginning, were there problems, like elephants getting sick or elephants getting out of control and well, in the get, first getting year, sort of psychologically disturbed? First year, or? yes, a lot of problems. And we had to approach that very, very slowly, very gently, and, uh, and slowly sort of work out how to to look after elephants because you know there was something we were all learning uh, including the, the new mahouts that we bought from the mm -hmm. village uh, because some of the Sumatran mahouts got homesick they went back mm -hmm. we had a couple of them who didn't want to use our new technique of training so they went back so we, we had to sort of almost start from mm -hmm. zero here and uh, we learned along the way it's a learning process I, mm -hmm. I knew nothing about elephants so I spent my time in the library getting books and mm -hmm. the internet getting all the information we could and of course talking to a lot, lot of people i was very lucky that mark shand who is an animal expert from london he's unfortunately recently died he spent some time here with me and he became mm -hmm. a very good friend and uh, and also steve Irwin became a very good friend he came to the park and loved it in fact he went up to samarcha to have a look at the problem himself oh, okay. so um uh, so you've, you've had some Oh, yeah, we've had a lot of experts here, and a lot of celebrities, yeah. many celebrities, mm -hmm. yes. But you mentioned very expensive, obviously. How, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the funding, both initially and how did it grow, and what did you do in order to basically finance this mammoth project of you? Well, the, the truth is, uh, Yanni, uh, my wife Yanni and I financed that ourselves. In the beginning? Our, yes, from our other businesses. Mm -hmm. We also took out a loan of about half a million dollars with the bank. We brought them up here to see this devastated area, which, which it was, to start with. And, uh, and they sort of scratched their heads and said, are you joking? <laughs> but we managed to convince them. We borrowed enough money to get the basics in to start with. And then over the years, we've just continued to put the money back into the park and invest in it. But literally, the money came from us. And every time there's a, a mm -hmm. problem in Indonesia, such as a volcano going off or a bomb, um, the rest of our company supports the park. This is always mm -hmm. the priority. So we put our money into the park to make sure we keep the staff mm -hmm. employed and the elephants fed and everything like that. So it's sort of mm -hmm. our, our, um, our baby, if you want to look at it that way. We always have to look mm -hmm. after it. Now, people can come in, obviously, there's lots of tourists coming in mm -hmm. and they can interact, they can ride the elephants. I mean, mm -hmm. but, uh, tell, me, tell me about it. How does it, is it a, you know, Elephants, uh, we, you're rescuing them, conserving them, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're also you know, tourist attractions. You mm -hmm. can ride them. So, how do you balance sort of the needs of the welfare of the elephants and to make this uh, a sort of a, an interesting and pleasant experience for tourists? Because well, especially since their in sure. past interactions with sure, humans sure. haven't been that well, great. Well, no, that's right. Um, what we've always tried to do from day one is to pretty much follow the philosophy that Steve Irwin had, the same as me, where people could get up close and have a really animal experience. So they could, you know, touch them, hand feed them. And, uh, and, and they're okay with that. Elephants, uh, are elephants okay love with that. They have no problem with it whatsoever. Of course, there is always the animal uh, activists mm -hmm. who will say, oh, that's no good. Elephants shouldn't be touched by humans. They shouldn't do this. They should be roaming in the wild. That's right. Well, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So they should, but what wild? That's the trouble, yeah? But no, we, we believe that uh, animals like these need to be interacted with, that they don't want to just stand around all day doing nothing. They like to go on rides. It certainly doesn't hurt them. Like people are saying, oh, it hurts the elephant. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of padding and, that. and the elephants take to it and they love it because it's part of their regime each day. They, it's like they're going to work, they go off, they do their rides, and it's only for a small amount of time through the day. It's not, yeah. not the whole day, that's for sure. And, and, and they don't mind having people riding on their no, backs? No, not at they? all. And uh, you'll see they go into the lake here with people on them. They love it, they, they actually, I mean, if this elephant wasn't happy, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be standing like this, Desi. We would be a long distance away from them. They've got to be, they've got to be happy to be able to get this close to them. So when people say they're not happy, that they've been treated brutally and that we've beaten them to, into submission, it's absolutely untrue. It's not true mm -hmm. at all. Would you the, get a lot of uh, criticism? Not a lot, and, but a little bit. But who are they bit. mainly from? They're usually they? animal activist groups who Where? really, yeah. England, mostly from England or Australia, mm -hmm. and uh, they're really people who, who 
are thinking emotionally rather than realistically. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything about it. They're not animal welfare people like us. They're animal activists. So their mentality is different to ours. So we, we know more about the elephants than they do, mm -hmm. to be honest. Well, what about feedback from particularly the local government and Very also... Very good. They, they come here often and they... We are favor? checked constantly by the mm -hmm. forestry department from Indonesia. And they're they, quite happy with what's we, happening. We have to do reports on every elephant every week. Mm -hmm. Monthly reports are put in, six monthly, one yearly reports. We keep all that up so that we inform the government all the time what's wrong with them, how healthy they are, if they have an abscess or something that has to be mm -hmm. operated on, um, diet, all that. It's all constantly followed because mm -hmm. the, the government insists that we keep them informed of what's what mm -hmm. the health of the elephants what is. What about, you know, a, a conservationist, um, you know, NGOs like World Wildlife Fund and all that? Yes, we get uh, some of those people through here, but... Are they quite happy or... Well, they, yes, I think most of them are they happy think, well, if they're in mm -hmm. animal welfare. It's the animal activists who are not involved in the welfare of animals mm -hmm. who are the ones who don't really understand. People who are involved with animals, like zoo, people from zoos, people from uh, groups where they're looking after animals and, mm -hmm. and caring with animals day to day, they understand that there are compromises that have to be made in a captive situation. So uh, we don't have any problem mm -hmm. with that. And the Indonesian government are here, also we've had you know, President Megawati here on mm -hmm. a few occasions. We get many of the ministers come here and we get lots mm -hmm. of celebrities. So would you say they're much happier here than say being in a zoo? Oh All yes, right. much better. In a zoo, in a zoo, they're in a usually in a fairly small enclosure. Okay, they can walk around, but it's very restricted. They can't really walk the way they would walk in the jungle. Mm -hmm. This guy, if he was in the jungle, would be walking probably about 30 kilometres a day. 30 kilometres. Yeah, searching for food. So he doesn't have to search for food here. We give it to him, as you can see. But don't they get bored? I mean, uh, do, do not sort of you know the games or activities well, that they. Well, the riding is it? something they love to do. We do some of them do painting things like that. And we've done different things over there. We're trying to sort of drift away from that because a lot of criticism. Oh, you're making them do circus tricks. No, we don't. We've never made them do circus tricks. They do sometimes do things like cook a football or something mm. like that. But. Uh, they love it. They actually enjoy it. And you'll find that each elephant has a preference to either do it or not do it. And if they don't want to do it, we so, don't so force the, them. These elephants, they have different characters. Very different. Very different. How well do you know them? Very well. <laughs> I do now, anyway. Well, they're, they're, like, they're like human beings, right? Absolutely, they yeah. I mean, sort of they're, not, they're not like us. They're not thinking, oh, gee, I wish I'd go up and watch television or write a book or something. Their, their <laughs> needs are a little bit more basic than that. They're mostly thinking food, food, and more yeah. food. Uh, but uh, yes, they do have characters. And, they're, and um, they like to interact with each other. They're sort of like a group animal, right? They're well, not yes, but we group. do have one problem with that here, is that these animals were all rescued from different areas to Sumatra. Oh, so see. it's not a, a group that grew up together, like a matriarchal group. Yeah. So some of them don't like each other. Oh, there are okay. a few conflicts Sounds amongst... Like humans. <laughs> like, not just with the males, but with the females too. We've got mm. a few females who don't like each other and that. So we learn their their personality and then we act accordingly. You know, those those ones, we keep them separated. And if we put them together, we make sure they're not too... They're going to have a conflict. Here. Okay, this big guy here, Tagore. You know. Tagore, yeah. How much is it to keep an elephant? How much money? How much money? Oh my god, well, I mean, it, you know, 250 you know. kilos of food a day a he day. eats. Um, but the, 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 that's not the, the cost. Mm -hmm. The cost is all the other things that go with it. The veterinary care, uh, mm -hmm. the muhuts, the cleaners, all the staff involved, all that goes into mm -hmm. the upkeep of the park. So his, uh, he is one out of 31, so all the costs of the park are divided up amongst 31 elephants, which gives you an idea of what it is. So it's many, many thousands of dollars a year. And people forget that Indonesia, we have our own elephants, not just in India, in That's Thailand. Right. Yeah, yes, yeah. and these are examples of our yep, Sumatran elephant. This is the, the unique Sumatran elephant. Three Asian elephants. One is the mainland of, uh, mm. of Asia. One is the Sri Lankan and the other is the Sumatran. And this is the most critically endangered in the world. Take a walk and sure, take a look sure. around the park. So it's quite popular now, is it? Sir? Very popular now. Yes, we're seeing uh, 
increasing amounts of people come here because uh, um, of a number of reasons. Number one, that we've had a lot of celebrities here. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's, let's take a look and see what sure. they're up to. So a, a lot of the visitors here, are they locals or international? Everything. Getting quite a... Every nationality can think of. We get a well, lot of Indonesians here now. Mm -hmm. not in the early days, not. But now, a lot of Indonesians, a lot of Asians as a whole. Um, quite a few Chinese, but most of our guests are Australian, European, American. Mm -hmm. A lot of Americans we get here. Americans love elephants. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're, well, they're, they're, be they're beautiful yeah. animals. I mean, they... And of course, in America, they don't have elephants. Yeah. <laughs> well, they used to, right? They used well, to have mammoths. They've, had mammoths. they've never had elephants. Uh, mm -hmm. And Indonesia has only had elephants in Sumatra, not here in Bali. So, something yeah. new. You know, we're, we're, and people forget that. Indonesia, mm -mm. we have our own elephants, not just in India, in That's Thailand. Right. Yeah, yes, yeah. and these are examples of our yep. Sumatran elephants. This is elephant. the, the unique Sumatran elephant. Three Asian elephants. One is the mainland of, uh, mm. of Asia, one is the Sri Lankan, and the other is the Sumatran. And this is the most critically endangered in the world. Okay, tell us a little bit about the layout. I mean, we have a, what is this, an elephant this bath is the, this here, is the lake. swimming pool? Yeah, this is the lake. All the elephants go in here at least twice a day uh, to wash and, uh, and play. They love to play in here, so you'll see them through the day in groups of three or four coming in and playing together. We can't put too many in at once or the water goes out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is one of the things that the people can intra do, you know, yes. interact with We've just finished elephants. now, but normally in the morning you'll see a lot of people here actually on the elephant in the water with the mahout, of course, uh, enjoying, you know, taking photos, etc., etc. Because I mean, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a, an age of selfies, isn't it? Everyone's yeah, a picture of an absolutely. elephant. <laughs> so Nigel, you enjoy doing this. Are you happy? I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, this is my passion. I do a lot of things in my life. I'm, you know, um, Harley Davidson rider. I'm mm -hmm. a, a avid gardener. All the gardens here, I do personally. Um, and I have a team of fantastic gardeners who work with mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah, I really love what I do. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a nice life. Uh, not my only thing I do, yeah. of course, but one of my favourites. Okay, uh... That's the shade house over there. This is the interaction area here where the people can come and feed the elephants mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, enjoy them. And uh, down there we have the baby elephant nursery. Oh, the nursery. Yeah. Got to Oh, they're so cute. We can see them. Let's, yep. let's That's walk the babies are down there at the moment. And uh, of course, so when, behind when, us is the when restaurant. When were they when, they were, uh, when the elephants gave birth? I mean, obviously, was it? Up in the, we used to not, this is a new building here. Mm -hmm. we, it's up the top there of the park. Uh, we have what we call our sick bay, where if we've got any elephants who are sick, we put them into there. Uh, so they were all born there. And they were given 24 hour maternal care where they oh, yeah. assisted we, in the birth? We or? have some beautiful footage of it actually, uh, Desi. Really yeah. beautiful footage of the, of the, in one particular birth, I think it was the third birth, um, went viral on the internet because oh. we filmed it as it was being born. And it was really quite amazing because the elephant was actually born mm -hmm. not breathing. And the mother kicked it and pulled its trunk <sighs> and made it breathe. Oh, wow. It's amazing. If you go into the internet, you can see that um, elephant birth in Bali. Really quite interesting. Yeah. Okay. And it's been, it's been watched by millions of people. So very famous birth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are we going to see the babies? Yeah, or? so but yeah. let's go around this way. Don't walk through the mud. A bit muddy today, I'm afraid. We've had a lot of rain the last few days. So this is the baby this enclosure. Is the, like. Yeah, this is the nursery. Of course, they're a bit outgrown, the nursery now. When they were little, they used to run around like crazy in here, play on their sort of toys and things. And in this little lake, they'd be in there with their mum, mm -hmm. splashing around. It was really lovely uh, to see. But they're, uh, they're a little bit big now. They're teenagers now, so they're... <laughs> oh, look! They're so cute! Look at them. And these are who? Well, that's, uh, we've got here Jigeg again. And uh, who else have we got here? Oh, oh, we've, we've oh Jesse's again. come down here again. Whiskey, whiskey. Whiskey, ah, whiskey. okay. Okay, whiskey. So Whoops. they're well cared for? They All very well cared for here. This is their, uh, they love being here. chubby. Very, well, you can see for yourself how chubby and healthy they are. Um, you can always tell an unhealthy elephant uh, by its body, you know, their big ribs will show mm. and things like this. These are extremely well-fed elephants. They never stop eating. Um, that's uh, coconut leaf they're eating. Coconut. And 
friend this is who ah, we have here? Ah, this is one of our amazing team of vets. Oh, yes. dokter hewannya, yeah. Yudis. Yes. Apa kabar? Baik, Ibu. Sudah lama di Sudah. sini? Sudah. Sejak berdiri. Sejak juga. berdiri? Ya. Dari tahun 1997. Ya. Oke, jadi hmm. memang Yudis ini... Dari pus... ayah, 1997. Saya dari 2006 sampai sekarang. Hmm. Jadi turun jadi temurun ya? 12 tahun saya di sini. Memang pendidikannya yeah. dokter hewan? Iya. Yeah. Oke, okay, let me ask him a few questions. Yeah, sure, yeah, jadi yang paling penting untuk kita ketahui untuk menjaga supaya gajah itu sehat apa-apa saja dokter Yudis? Ya, dari uh, kesehatan, mm -hmm. jadi kita rutin seminggu dua kali datang mm -hmm. untuk general check up. Apa-apa saja yang dicek? Jadi ada fisiknya, postur, kemudian dari mata, mm -hmm. apakah dia uh, happy, jernih, mm -hmm. sehat. Kemudian kita juga punya program jangka pendek, mm -hmm. jangka panjang. Jadi program bulanan pemberian multivitamin. Mm -hmm. Kemudian multivitaminnya obat, apa apa saja dan untuk uh, saja? multivitamin untuk mempertahankan kondisi tubuh, menambah daya tahan tubuh, uh, memberikan obat cacing untuk kontrol mm -hmm. cacing yang ada di dalam uh, saluran gastrointestinalnya. Mm -hmm. Kemudian vaksin tetanus untuk mencegah kalau terjadi luka atau apa. Kemudian eh, kita juga <coughs> apa eh, dalam waktu dekat ini sedang program untuk breeding ya. Oh breeding, ya. tapi breeding secara alami, alami. ya. Programnya jadi seperti apa? Memperkenalkan, jadi, memperkenalkan mencari betina-betina yang produktif, hmm. kemudian mencarikan pejantan yang tepat, mm -hmm. uh, mudah-mudahan bisa menambah populasi gajah yang ada di sini. Mm. Nah, ini selama Yudi ada di sini, ada kasus atau insiden di mana gajah sakit dan bagaimana penanganannya? Kalau gajah sakit, karena sudah kita maintenance, sudah uh, rutin kita lakukan pemeriksaan, tidak pernah terjadi oh, kasus. jarang ya? ya. Ada nggak penyakit yang memang khusus gajah yang ini yang derita itu? Hmm. Saya lihat mungkin ada tadi ada benjol-benjol atau -benjol, ya, itu. Itu umum pada gajah ada abses, uh -huh. tapi di sini kita sudah tangani dengan maksimal, uh -huh. jadi tidak mengganggu dari aktivitas mereka. Uh -huh. ya. Susah nggak untuk merawat? Ya. Ini ada 31 ekor di sini. <laughs> ya, jadi keberhasilan dokter tentu eh, terkait dengan mahut, pawang, kemudian ada manajemen juga. Jadi mm -hmm. kerjasama dari tiga elemen ini akan menghasilkan eh, hasil yang jauh lebih bagus ketimbang dokter bekerja sendiri tanpa yeah. ada dukungan dari eh, mahut dan mm -hmm. manajemennya. Masing-masing punya, punya karakternya. Betul. Ya. Ya. Termasuk mereka mau ngambil dari kanan, dari kiri. Kemudian ada yang tadi takut dengan melihat dokter dia iya, lari. Tadi, ketika ketika Jadi, dokter Yudis datang seperti anak-anak mereka ngumpet ya. Harus ya, dibujuk-bujuk dulu. Iya, jadi... <laughs> Jadi kalau ya selama ini baby sini kan ada empat ekor ya, nggak ya. ada masalah waktu, waktu uh, mereka melahirkan itu. Melahirkan ya. mereka alami. Alami ya. ya. Alami, jadi tidak ada masalah yang cukup uh, berarti, lancar-lancar hmm. saja. Lancar-lancar saja ya. dan ini kelihatannya juga cabi-cabi gemuk-gemuk <laughs> deh. Yeah. They're quiet. They yeah, must eat a lot. Chubby, yeah. They must eat a lot. Well, Nigel, it's been an eye-opening experience, and maybe just because this is a different way of looking after, you know, elephants, mm. rescuing elephants. 
what sort of things would you know would you sort of recommend to you know the, whether it's to the Indonesian government or to you know zoos or to this our relationship with elephants what is the best way the, for us because remember yeah. you know otherwise mm -hmm. 10 20 maybe 50 years from now we're not going to have no, that's, any more that's elephants true. in the wild unfortunately that's true um, as I said before, the elephants in the wild are disappearing at an alarmingly fast rate. Uh, as a, as a, a place to look after elephants, this we believe is as good as we can do. And uh, we've taken a lot of trouble and a lot of expense to make sure this, this herd of elephants are happy and will live out mm -hmm. a very happy life. Of course, they have to do a little bit of work and there are some compromises, but that's you know, something we've learnt over the last 20 years, how to do it and how to keep the park um, uh, financially supported as well as everything else because they are an expensive animal to look after. But for the government my suggestion would be that they need to really seriously look at what's left of the jungle in Sumatra mm -hmm. and try and maintain at least some elephants in the jungle still. Mm -hmm. I mean once you get below a certain level and amount of elephants it's, it's no longer going to work so it, it's something that needs to be done now quite quickly. Mm -hmm. These elephants will never return to the wild because yeah. there is nowhere for them to go. But the ones that are left there, the government has to think very seriously about what they're going to do to maintain. These are our responsibility mm -hmm. as human beings on the planet to look after these protective animals and to make sure mm -hmm. that they survive into the future so we can all enjoy them. This park is a place to come and enjoy mm -hmm. the animal close up, but it's not the answer to the problem of the elephants in the wild. Mm -hmm. So that's really what has to be approached. We're yeah. doing the best we can here, and I think what we're doing is as good as it gets. But out back in Sumatra, there needs to be some uh, mm -hmm. definite but decisions what, what, made. What should be done though, because, you know, as jungles or forests get deforested, as plantations expanded, and conflicts between humans and the elephants themselves, obviously the lands belong to the elephants. What mm -hmm. needs to be done? Because we see a lot of elephants getting poisoned, yes. they're getting poached, they're yep. getting killed. And Still happening, yes. How to well, it, mitigate it, it, there that? There has to know? be a compromise, obviously. Life is a compromise. This park is a compromise. Mm -hmm. You've got to work out ways to sustain the elephants in that environment. That means don't keep expanding the oil plantations. Don't keep expanding the the Arcacia forests for paper, you know, give the elephants an area and it needs to be a sustainable area. You can't leave a little piece here and a little piece here and a little piece there because the elephants can't connect. Mm -hmm. It needs to be fairly large area and, and that's what has to be thought about. There is one area um, uh, in Sumatra which has been designated but it's probably not enough. Mm. You know, um, need to think and about And there, there what has else. to be a greater sort of law enforcement against yes. poachers and people. And people deforestate and, mm -hmm. you know, and people timber, who kill timber people and people who kill them. But they don't kill the elephant normally just because it's there in the forest, unless they're, they're ivory poachers. Mm -hmm. It's usually when the elephants come into conflict with people going onto their land to uh, destroy. You know, because um, they do need a lot of land, they do they need, need a lot, a lot of, of space to walk. Well, they move around a lot. Elephants are continually moving in the wild looking for food. That's mm -hmm. their life. Where's the food? When they go there, it's like, you know, where's the nearest McDonald's? Sort of thing, you know? <laughs> they're, they're searching for food the same yeah. as we do. Where's the best restaurant? And if they find a nice uh, new plantation of uh, mm -hmm. oil palm trees, of course they're going to say, this is great, we'll go in here and eat all this. Mm. That's when the problems start. Mm. Now, Dr. Yudis, anda sendiri kenapa menyukai gajah? Apa kira-kira yang ada dalam uh, ya binatang ini yang membuat Yudis merasa bahwa wah ini yeah. profesi yang <laughs> menyenangkan? Ya, yeah, gajah ini satwa yang sangat unik. Jadi masing-masing gajah mereka punya kebiasaan yang berbeda. Seperti Ramona, dia suka seperti ini gayanya. Hmm. Jadi uh, apa ya? Masing-masing uh, punya karakternya sendiri. Betul. Ya. ya, termasuk mereka mau ngambil dari kanan, dari kiri. Kemudian ada yang tadi takut dengan 
melihat dokter dia iya, lari. Tadi, ketika <laughs> ketika Jadi, dokter Yudis datang seperti anak-anak mereka ngumpet ya. Harus ya, dibujuk-bujuk dulu. Iya, jadi, <laughs> jadi kalau mau melakukan injeksi harus ingat, wah ini yang takut dengan dokter bagaimana kita bisa mendapat kesempatan untuk melakukan injeksi dari arah mana. Jadi cukup unik tantangannya juga cukup bervariasi ininya. They smell him yeah. as soon as he comes in the gate. Hey, is, the is, doctor's is, here. Maybe is, is this why you love elephants? Is this why I, you have I a special? I think that's part of the about, beauty of elephants. elephants? Yeah. They, they're, they're beautiful creatures. I mean, they're a very strange looking creature. They, they have this look that no other animal has, but they just have a beautiful personality. Their characters are unique. They're, you In a situation like this, you get to know every single one. And that's what I love about the elephants. They're really beautiful. But I want to see them here for the future, yeah. for my grandchildren to see uh, and, Absolutely. and other people's grandchildren. And, and they have they have a right. Yes. They have a right, right to, to exist. this planet yes. to exist mm -hmm. as we do. And sometimes Absolutely. as humans, we're very selfish. We, we take, need a lot take, of space. take. Yeah, we, we don't give. Mm -hmm. And then we put our interests ahead of all the other creatures. I'm afraid that happens a lot. Right. And of course, the people in the cities who become, you know, uh, critical of places like this or other places, they're really, they're, they're completely unaware of the real situation. They're just thinking emotionally, oh, they should all be free in the jungle. And we would all agree with that, but there are problems on the planet. Yeah. These animals have big problems, mm -hmm. along with a lot of other animals. Sumatra, for instance, it's not just the elephants, it's also the rhino, the orangutan, the gibbon. Um, the uh, other creatures there who are, yeah. are suffering as well. So, you know, it, it's a big problem that we have to take seriously if we really want to make and, sure and they're here for the loss. future. And not yes. just in Indonesia, all, no, over, the all world, over the world. In, in Africa, Absolutely. the number of elephants are diminishing. Mm -hmm. The poachers, you know. Well, they're down still... to, in Africa, they're down mm -hmm. to the last 700,000. Here in Indonesia, we're down to our last thousand or so. Wow. That's a big difference. Anyway, Nigel, mm -hmm. we appreciate your efforts and Thanks. the work that you do and it's nice to see lots of happy elephants and, and keep lots up of happy good guests and too. Happy, yes, happy yeah, guests and, lovely elephants, and, yeah. and it's, a, it's a lovely thing to be able mm -hmm. to interact of course you know ideally they should be out in the wild but Absolutely. if there is no more wild then i guess what do you do you know looking after them is mm -hmm. the best that we can do yeah. Yes. Terima kasih banyak Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. You know, gajah-gajahnya takut nih sama dokter. <laughs> He does a good job. Absolutely, we can't do without them. <laughs> iya, demikian insight kali ini langsung dari Mason Elephant Park Lodge di mana di sini bisa ditemukan 31 gajah Sumatera. Perlu diingat, jumlah gajah Sumatera yang ada di Indonesia ini semakin lama semakin berkurang. 10 tahun terakhir ini saja lebih dari 100 gajah tewas, dibunuh, diracun memang untuk kepentingan manusia karena deforestasi, karena konflik antara binatang dan manusia mungkin kita harus ya memastikan bahwa masa depan gajah bisa dilestarikan karena binatang-binatang ini memiliki hak hidup yang sama seperti kita manusia-manusia. Jadi saya rasa itu yang perlu kita ingat. Sekali lagi, Insight with Desi Anwar langsung dari Bali, ya, Elephant Park.